Ever fill out a form online and wonder, where does all this info go? Like when you hit submit, where does it actually land? Well, today we're going to find out. We're taking a deep dive into how user data travels from your screen to, yep, you guessed it, a database. We're talking behind the scenes action here. Exactly. And to illustrate this whole process, we're using a real coding example right from a tutorial website. It shows how a simple form, the kind you see everywhere online, can grab your info and send it to a database. And this isn't some random obscure example either. We're talking HTML for the form itself, which is like the bread and butter of the web paired with, are you ready for this? PHP, PHP, huh? Not exactly a household name, but I've definitely seen it lurking in website code. Right. So like HTML builds the structure, the form you see, and PHP is the behind the scenes organizer. You got it. PHP does the heavy lifting, but there's more to it than just those two. This example also uses a little something called bootstrap and throws in some validation for good measure. From a developer's perspective, can you tell us why these are important? Hmm. Well, I've dabbled in a bit of web stuff, enough to know that Bootstrap is your friend. It's like having a free-made design template for websites, right? Yeah. Saves you from reinventing the wheel every time you start a new project. Exactly. Bootstrap helps create visually appealing forms quickly and efficiently, no need to start from scratch. And validation, that's key for data quality. Ever get frustrated with those forms that make you retype your email or password? Uh, don't even get me started. That's validation at work. In this case, it makes sure that, say, a field that's supposed to be a number actually contains a number. No letters, no symbols, just digits. Helps prevent errors and makes the whole online experience smoother. Makes sense. It's like they say, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. So thanks to validation, we've got good, clean data. But where does it actually go? That's where our database comes in, right? And this example uses something called Schoolite. Now, I've heard of databases, but Schoolite is a new one for me. What's the deal with that? Well, you wouldn't use a tank to transport a feather, would you? Databases are similar. You've probably heard of the big names like MySQL. But for smaller projects, Schoolite is like the perfect little scooter. Because it's lightweight. Exactly. Schoolite is what we call a file-based database. Unlike those bulky databases that often run on separate servers, Schoolite lives right inside your project. Nice and compact. So no need to set up a whole other system just to deal with this data. That's pretty efficient. Exactly. Saves developers a lot of time and hassle, especially for simpler applications. Okay, so Squealite is our storage locker then. But we still need someone to carry that data from the form to the locker, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm guessing PHP comes back into play. Spot on. PHP is a server-side language. It works its magic behind the scenes on the web server. In this particular coding example, we see it connecting to our Skolite database and preparing something called a prepared statement. Prepared statement. Yeah, that exactly. sounds kind of important. What's so special about those, especially when it comes to security. So instead of like writing our sensitive information on a postcard for anyone to see, we're using PHP to deliver it securely, right? That's a great way to put it. Prepared statements are like those tamper-proof envelopes. They make sure only the exact data we intend to send to the database actually gets there. That's definitely good to know, especially with all the personal information flying around online these days. Okay, so we've got PHP doing its secure delivery thing, and Sockwhite is our trusty storage locker. Are we done? Is that the whole picture? Well, not quite. Remember, this code snippet is like a sneak peek, a tiny glimpse into a much larger system. In the real world, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Right, because websites need to be built to handle, well, everything, right? Exactly. We need to think about things like error handling. What if the database connection drops or there's some problem saving the data? You don't want the whole website crashing just because of one little hiccup. Exactly. Robust applications, the kind we rely on every day, they need to handle those situations gracefully, maybe by logging the error for the developers to check later or by showing the user a helpful message instead of a scary error screen. Makes sense. Keep things running smoothly no matter what. Precisely. And then there's the whole world of database design. Oh, right. Because it's not just about shoving data into some digital storage bin, right? You have to organize it in a way that makes sense. You got it. We call that database design. How do you structure those tables to store all sorts of different data efficiently? How do you make sure the data stays accurate and that relationships between different pieces of information are clear? These are all crucial questions for developers. It's like this whole hidden world most of us never even think about. We just see a website, type in some info, and it works. But behind the scenes, there's this whole intricate system making it all happen. It's a bit like an orchestra, actually. 
all these different instruments, these technologies playing together in harmony. You've got your user interface, the part we see and interact with, then the programming logic that drives the actions, and of course the database management, keeping everything organized and accessible. And it all has to work seamlessly or the whole thing falls apart. Exactly. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It is. I'm kind of glad we have folks like you who understand this stuff because it seems pretty complex to me. It really makes you appreciate all that goes on behind the scenes, even something as simple as submitting a form. You know? Yeah. But we've talked about storing the data. What about actually using it? Ah, that's where things get really interesting. Storing the data is just step one. The real power comes from accessing it, retrieving it from the database. You know, mm -hmm. we can display it in different ways, generate reports, all sorts of things. Imagine searching for a specific student's info or creating a class ranking that all depends on getting the data out of the database and, well, putting it to work. So it's like a continuous journey. The data is always on the move. It's not just sitting still in that square light locker, is it? Exactly. It's constantly flowing, being accessed, updated, used in different ways to make websites dynamic and, well, useful. And how that data is structured, how we access it, that has a huge impact on a website's performance. It's like... The more organized the data, the easier it is to find what you need. It's like that with, well, everything, right? Precisely. And that's why database design is so important. Yeah. This has been a fascinating deep dive, really eye-opening, even for someone like me who, you know, isn't writing code every day. It's good to understand the basics, right? Makes yeah. you a more informed user, helps you appreciate the complexity behind the, well, the things we take for granted online. Absolutely. So next time I'm on a website clicking away, I'll be thinking about all this. Mm -hmm. The HTML, the PHP, that squad light database humming away in the background. It's quite a symphony, all these technologies working together. And remember, we've just focused on one database here. Squilight. Right, because there's a whole universe of databases out That's there. Exactly. My school, PostgreSQL, cloud-based solutions, tons of options, each with its own strengths and ideal use cases. Well, I think that's a great place to leave our listeners with something to ponder. We took a deep dive into Squilight, but there's a whole world of data management out there to explore. A world that's constantly evolving. It certainly is. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into the world of data handling. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time.